Hello again guys, it's Daniel at Dogs That Are Subaru and today I wanted to uh, do a review of a 2023 Subaru Forester. Um, so the Forester is our uh, small size um, SUV. A little larger than the Crosstrek, a little smaller than the Outback and going over the exterior you can see that it's got more of that uh, classical rectangular SUV shape more Jeep-like, as I like to say it, versus the um, Outback. And it's got the same ground clearance, uh, the same size wheels, and uh, even the same the same all-wheel drive, and even the same engine as uh, our other models, like the Outback, like the Ascent, and the Crosstrek. So 8.7 inches of ground clearance, um, same size wheels, and the 2.5 liter naturally aspirated um, four-cylinder boxer engine. 182 horsepower. Uh, very good on fuel. You can expect about uh, nine, uh, eight, eight and a half to nine and a half uh, liters per hundred kilometers in the city, and then on the highway you can easily get into the sevens. And um, one thing that I like about the car quite a bit is that uh, tall roofline gives way to these nice big windows. Very tall windows. You can see even the back window here is nice and rectangular. So the visibility from inside is really great. Subaru also puts these mirrors on the door to save this space and create even more visibility. Let's take a look what it looks like um, on the inside. So as you can see, very nice tall windows, um, nice commanding position here, and you can really see all around. You kind of get that uh, fishbowl effect. The car also has an extra large sunroof. This is one of my favorite features uh, in the Forester, um, as opposed to the Outbacks and the Crosstracks and other cars, other Subarus that get the smaller um, sunroof that's about half the size. And uh, this can slide all the way, but it cannot tilt. Still going over the rest of the exterior. And uh, this is the 2023 model, so you'll notice that the headlights here have changed. Uh, I think it was last year in the 2022 that they changed the headlights. They um, made that little divot right here, so it looks a bit more modern, a bit more aggressive looking. Uh, the front grille has also been redesigned. But overall, this is the same chassis and the same shape as the 2019 Plus models. So this is probably uh, one to two years away from being redesigned. Uh, with that said, it is a winning formula, so I'm sure Subaru won't change it overly much. Um, apart from, uh, who knows, maybe a hybrid or something like that, a different drivetrain that they will uh, put in it. Uh, but again, going back to the exterior, very nice design, a good blend of functionality and beauty. And in the back, this one comes equipped with a power tailgate, which most of them do, other than the base model. And uh, you can see here a very generous trunk space. This opening right here is actually our widest opening for any SUV. More than the Ascent, more than the Crosstrek and the Outback, which is surprising. Uh, even more surprising is that this loading floor um, is actually our lowest loading floor of any SUV. This floating f loading floor right here is higher on even the Crosstrek, which is a, our smallest SUV. And uh, very nice and spacious uh, inside, including the trunk. This is the limited trim level, which in Canada is uh, one of the top of the lines, one, one below the, the Premier. So it already comes with Harman Kardon sound system, electronically actuated seat release, tonneau cover right here. This is just for extra privacy. And because the car is nice and tall, you have extra storage space underneath here, so this is another favorite feature of mine. Look how much space you've got here. A couple of drawers almost. And underneath this is the uh, spare tire and the tools. So very, very functional um, trunk. On the top, uh, you actually have LED lights and two buttons here. One to close the gate and one to close and lock the car all at once. Let's try that. That only works if the key is nearby. It's in my pocket right now. And it should beep. There, there we go. It beeped and flashed once. So that means that the car is locked. All right. 
Now um, let's check out the back, the back seats. I'm gonna unlock it from here. All right, so a couple of other features, probably my third, a third favorite here in terms of features is how wide these doors open. If you look from here, you can see that this is almost a, not a 90 degree, but maybe an 80 degree open. We're looking at it head on and you can see this is almost a 90 degree angle there. So very easy to step in and, and get inside. There's actually, actually an extra step right here, specifically designed to put your feet on when you're loading something on the on the roof rails on the top here if you've got crossbars. Um, other than that, another thing that I really like about this car is these seats are reclinable. With this strap, if we pull on it, uh, we can then bring the seat down or up. So let me try to kind of do that with my elbow. Um, yeah, I don't know if you can see that, but uh, I've reclined the seat a little bit. Basically, I pulled the strap and pushed on the seat and now it's reclined a little bit. You will see that the 60-40 split is at a different angle, so that proves that. And we can do the same thing on the other side. We can uh, angle it as well. So it's a very nice reclined uh, position here. And if the sunroof was open, you can see even your passengers in the back just have a very nice view of, of everything. Um, also new to this generation are the vents right here. So that's a very welcome uh, addition. Um, heated seats in the back, that's in the limited trim level, and USBs, that's on most trim level, trim, trim levels. Um, also, the cup holder right here, and the armrest, and just another look of just how spacious this is. Even your, uh, you know, if you're a family of all tall people, tall people sitting in the front, no one will be complaining here in the back. Um, you know, you can recline this and just have ton of space. There's just a ton of headroom in here, which is really, really great. So that's the back. There's always more features to talk about, but uh, we'll leave it at that uh, for the back. Uh, on the inside, again, the Harman Kardon sound system on the limited trim level. Also comes with memory seats and self-dimming side mirrors, self-dimming rear view mirror, um, which is awesome. Very comfortable seats here with 10-way seats. There's an opener right here for the trunk and you can actually customize the height to which the trunk opens. Um, so that's what this button is. It's kind of like a memory button, but for the trunk, the car has steering responsive headlights. So LED headlights, those are actually standard. Um, and that's uh, one of the features that's been added to the Forester over time. Um, I kind of wanted to just mention that point because, in fact, uh, there's a 2012 or maybe a 2013, 2011 Forester from uh, from that era, so from about 10 years ago. And you can see that the size of the vehicle, the ground clearance, this has stayed about the same. You know, the new one is probably wider, longer, a little taller, but the ground clearance is about the same. And the capabilities are very similar, but what you get are some of those safety features. The construction is more robust. Um, the frame is more uh, robust. There's less bending in it. Um, the ride is much smoother. Uh, better airbags, more airbags, uh, better seat positioning systems. And uh, of course, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, ways to uh, connect the car, the car to your phone. Uh, also, eyesight system. The eyesight system here has been added over time. We've had it for quite a few years now. Um, but that's uh, quite a nice uh, safety feature. It watches the road, can see what, what you can see, and it will do autonomous emergency braking, lane keep assist, and uh, adaptive cruise control. So let's have a seat and just take a look at the inside. So the Forester is one of our last vehicles in the lineup um, that hasn't gotten the extra large screen yet. Uh, when that comes in, they might get rid of that secondary screen on the top which uh, you can currently view different types of information on. And uh, we've, we've got this uh, split screen set up. Instead of this, it might just be one full size screen, um, but it's uh, quite easy to navigate. Um, it's also one of the last uh, cars that doesn't have a wireless Apple CarPlay, but that may come in 2024. 
Uh, if, not, if not that, then uh, the 2025 surely will have it. Uh, very nice uh, area here, lots of um, physical buttons still, so some of you might appreciate that, I sure do. Which is very nice, easy to get to. The parking brake, the heated seats, X mode right here, that's for extra, extra traction control. Um, here in the Limited we've got the leather seats, so real leather seating area. Dual zone climate control, built-in map. Hopefully that didn't create a copyright, that song just now. But uh, yeah, pretty nice. It's got that and the backup camera. No 360 degree um, cam, but it does have blind spot monitor system right there. <coughs> Sorry. And um, heated steering wheel as well. That's becoming a more standardized feature. Adaptive cruise control and, um, and uh, multimedia controls uh, right here. So yeah, a great car to drive. Um, you can really see well all around you. It's one of the features uh, that I like about it. A very solid feel, and uh, since it rides on the new Subaru Global platform, uh, the center of gravity uh, and the center of gravity being low, um, you get a very minimal body roll going around turns versus this uh, older generation one. So big difference there in engineering, safety systems as well. They didn't have the LED headlights, let alone steering responsive ones. Uh, so we've got that now. And the eyesight system is, uh, is quite nice. You can turn off a lot of those uh, uh, systems, the nanny systems, if uh, you don't like them. But uh, at least here in BC, in Canada, in British Columbia, that system also saves 10% on car insurance if, uh, if it comes equipped on the car. So that's another uh, 